You're going to see some brand new buses on the road in Greensboro, but you might not hear them because they are electric and they're the first ones in the state of North Carolina. Today, we introduced 10 new electric buses to our community and to the state of North Carolina. This is a big deal and it is a big day. Not only for the city of Greensboro, but for the entire state of North Carolina. This was a really big undertaking. Why do so much so fast? Well, actually, it didn't happen overnight. Uh, this was a three-year process as far as acquiring battery electric buses for the city of Greensboro. But once we were able to uh, get that decision made, uh, we knew that it was the right choice in terms of the money that we would save on maintenance and fuel of our current diesel, fee, uh, diesel fleet. And you already have some of these on the road, even though today was the ribbon cutting. How is it working out so far? What's the response you're getting from the drivers, the riders, and, and just kind of general people who see them out and about? Well, we have six buses on the road so far, and our operators, they describe them as driving Cadillacs, which I, I believe because they are very nice. Our riders, they love it in terms of being able to plug in their phones and charge them while they're on their trips, and also the uh, lack of noise and vibration that they experience when they're riding on the buses. So everyone has been pretty pleased with it so far. Uh, we're pretty pleased with the fact that we've dumped the pump. We don't have to uh, put diesel fuel in it. We just plug it in at night, and the next day we just take off. These are all American electric buses, and we should be very proud of that. This is absolutely the future. If you look at bus fleets around the world, the biggest cities around the world are working to eliminate tailpipe emissions from their cities for public health reasons. And they're also working on diversifying their sources of fuel. So tell me, Ryan, why this is such a big deal. You said this is a big deal. Why? Yeah, it's a, it's a big deal for the scale of the deployment. GTA Greensboro is deploying one of the largest fleets on the East Coast. So as of this fall, Greensboro will have the second largest battery electric bus fleet on the East Coast of the United States. So the, the only city that's actually farther ahead of Greensboro right now is Philadelphia. And the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transit Authority, SEPTA, manages a fleet of, I think, over a thousand buses. And so what you're seeing here is a medium-sized transit agency in North Carolina has pulled into a leadership position and is one of the first 10% of transit systems in the United States to implement electric buses. But they're doing it in a, in a big way in that they're not starting with one bus that they're going to pilot and demo for a couple months and then go back and then maybe do two or three, they're starting out with 20% of their fleet, which requires maintenance and drivers. So it's a much more holistic commitment to electrification than we're seeing from 90% of the transit agencies in the United States. And these are all electric, no gas. This is not hybrid. These are all electric, no gas. And for Proterra, we, we won't put a tailpipe on a bus. That's not what we do. We, we are 100% committed to the full electrification of the bus sector. So they smell better. They, they have not much sound that comes from them, right. so noise pollution is pretty much eliminated with that. And they save a lot of money too, right? Yeah, they, they save a tremendous amount of money. A diesel bus on the road is using about 10,000 gallons of diesel fuel per year. There are 70,000 low floor city transit buses in the United States. So when you add it up, the amount of fuel that the transit sector is buying, which you're paying for with your tax dollars and your fare box right. revenue, it's a massive amount of money. For, for GTA alone, one bus per year is consuming over $25,000 of diesel, and they keep the buses for over 10 years. So every diesel bus that you see go by, it's going to cost you as a taxpayer $250,000 of oil. The other problem is that money's not staying in state. So if you look at this deployment, we worked with Duke Energy. So the electricity in North Carolina, the wires, the transmission system, it's maintained by citizens who live in North Carolina. So what we're building here is an example of a circular economy where a lot more of the services deployed by the government are actually provided by the local community. So it's a win-win it's a in terms of it's very good for the environment, it's good for energy security, but it also just keeps more of your tax dollars in state. Once again, the city of Greensboro is serving as a gateway for North Carolina. This time, with a new future of cleaner and healthier transportation. I'm very excited about this. I'm excited that Greensboro really is showing a leadership 
position when it comes to transportation across the country. One of the biggest fleets on the East Coast and the first in North Carolina. What is that? How does it make you feel? Uh, that was really, really humbling just to think that we are second on the East Coast only to Philadelphia, which has a fleet of 2,000 buses. So yes, that was really surprising. But you know, that just again goes to show that Greensboro is always forward thinking and trying to serve the community a best interest when it comes to public transportation. By this fall, Greensboro will have 10 all electric buses on the road. Find out more and catch a ride by going to ridegta.com.